Here we have a transition elements exam question from the OCRA specification in A-level chemistry, and it's another level of response. Now, this particular question has a lot of information. It's got loads of vocab, it's got loads of descriptions of the different compounds here, and you're being asked to identify structures C through F by formulae or structures as appropriate, and you need to include any equations, any changes in oxidation number, and you need to show you're working out. This is a lot of instruction. This is a massive amount of instruction that they're getting you to do for this. Your answer needs to be really well laid out, not just because it's a level of response, but also because you could start to get overwhelmed by how uh, you're meant to present this information and what order you're meant to do it in. I would honestly, and as you'll see in a moment, over annotate your question up here so you are really clear at what you're doing and also split this up. Make sure you do it as three distinctive sta uh, stages. Use subheadings and do a really calm and controlled layout for this. Keep chugging through it so don't just suddenly get distracted midway, but I would do it section by section. They are completely independent from each other. You don't need to do one before the other and so you can break this up into three different parts. Let's have a look at what my model answer for this would look like. Okay, like I said, this is from the uh, OCRA specification. It's actually from the 2018 paper one exam. And this level of response is all about the copper transition element. You'll see here that I have got this full description here of all my annotations, and I'm going to take you through everything I've got here. You do need to know your colorful ion grid for this one. If you've not got that OCR resource, it is an absolutely amazing sheet of information, and I'll put a link to my video for the copper two um, ions and all of the reactions you need to know for that, which also includes a link to that OCR resource down in the video description. So here I've got three distinctive reactions and I need to describe each of them with enough information to provide details about uh, structures C through F. So I'm going to start off with reaction one. Now, aqueous copper two sulfate, which we know contains the hexa-aqua complex ion, reacts with excess ammonia in a ligand substitution reaction. It's actually a partial ligand substitution there. And we know that because we form this deep blue solution that we're familiar with from the specification, which is an octahedral complex ion C. That's that one just there. And we know it's a trans isomer. So because we've got this two to four ratio of the monodentate ligands here, we do get cis trans isomerism. And they specifically here want us to make the trans isomer. Now, I'm not going to read through two and three just yet. I'm going to focus on reaction one. So let's have a look at my reaction one answer first. So here is my reaction equation. This is really common. You must make sure you know this ligand substitution reaction. Again, my copper two uh, complex video is linked in the description down below. And this structure here is C. It's our dark blue complex ion. And there is the trans isomer for it. And we know it's the trans isomer because the two to four ratio of my monodentate ligands here has the two in the two to four ratio displayed 180 degrees apart. You could have put them through here like that. That still would have been 180, but it's more common to see them above and below like that in the two axial positions on the octahedral structure. Let's move back up to part two. Part two, I've got copper one oxide. There we go. That's Cu2O. So don't for one moment think that's going to be CuO2. It's Cu2O. It reacts with hot dilute sulfuric acid in a disproportionation to form a blue solution, which is copper sulfate, and a brown solid, which is copper. This is on the colorful ion grid. It is mentioned in the OCRA specification inside module five when you get to the interconversions of the transition elements. So you need to be aware of the redox reactions and the different reagents necessary to perform those. And it's the interconversions of the copper when it goes back and forth between two common oxidation numbers. So please make sure you don't overlook that section of the specification. Otherwise, reaction two here is going to feel like application. It's not. It's actually recall. It is mentioned in your spec really clearly. Don't forget about that link in the video description. So before we move on to three, let's have a look at what's going on with two. This disproportionation process is something you are meant to be aware of. And you can see I've got my full reaction equation here with D, the blue solution, and E, the brown solid, being clearly identified. You are not allowed to refer to the copper as a copper colored solid. You must say it's a brown solid. Now, this is a disproportionation reaction, so it's time for the oxidation numbers to get incorporated here. And we, again, are aware, this is recall, if you've revised this and mentioned this um, in your revision and seen this in the spec, we are aware that it is plus one to plus two. 
going from the copper one oxide over to the copper two sulfate. And we've got plus one to zero going from the copper one oxide over to the copper, which has an oxidation number of zero because it's an uncombined element. We are also aware, therefore, to allocate our vocab here of oxidation and reduction, respectively. Finally, here we move to reaction three. This one is not specifically in the spec, but um, it is well described and actually it's okay to follow. It's very similar to uh, a lot of the things you meet in modules three and two. So we've got uh, the heating to constant mass idea of waters of crystallization, but also we've got copper two oxide, which is gonna react in a very similar way to any of the group two metal oxides. And there's a lot of crossover here with different parts of modules three and five. It's not impossible to follow what's going on here at all. Essentially, we have a reaction between an oxide and an acid, which makes a salt, and that salt then has a number of waters of crystallization associated with it, which then are evaporated away to leave us with an anhydrous salt. And we've been provided with loads of information here um, in order to help us analyze this substance. So for reaction three, just at the bottom down here, um, we've got our reaction equation, which is the copper 2 oxide reacting with the nitric acid to form copper 2 nitrate and some water just here. The blue solution, you might say, I thought copper 2 sulfate was blue. Remember, it's not the sulfate that makes it blue. It's the copper 2 part. So the copper 2 nitrate here is just as blue. We've then got all of this information here, which is our percentage composition by mass. You know what to do with this, it's empirical formula. And so the empirical formula of the salt is gonna be CuH6N2O9. Now that is the hydrated salt, I wanna make that really clear. So you're thinking, why have I done these two bits together? Look at these hydrogens, look at these oxygens. This is going to be the hydrated salt, whereas this, of course, as we can see written in the reaction equation alongside the water, is the anhydrous. Uh, what we have, therefore, is a task to look at the difference between these two just here, and we can see that we've got three moles of H2O, which explains the six hydrogens and the additional three oxygens that we have in that empirical formula. And so F, therefore, is this structure here with uh, the three H2O. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope it has made a difference, but before you go, I do need some help. Please leave this video a like before you go because it really does help support my channel and let YouTube know I still exist. There's loads of good stuff around the screen now and links to my other video content in the description down below, so make sure you check that out before you head off. Until next time though, everybody, happy revising.